want to get to 10K steps per day. You want to vastly improve your diet. You want to start tracking calories. You want to get to the point where you're in the gym four to five times a week. You want to improve your strength in the gym. You want to sleep eight hours per night. You want to drink three to four liters of water per day. That's very overwhelming. So I said about five different topics there. Really start with one per week. So you might think, oh God, it's going to take me five or six weeks before I even start getting things moving. Trust me, you will burn yourself out. You will get sick of things. You will get overwhelmed. If you are not losing weight and you want to, you're not in deficit or something's going wrong with tracking. With aging, it really comes down to weight loss. And that's also by default, you're going to have a healthy diet there as well. And drink plenty of water and sleep. And they're the main things. I'm not even big on skincare at all. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry and literally billions of dollars are being invested, so buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power, so how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you do want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8 and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash game plan. That's oracle.com slash game plan. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the final podcast Q&A of 2023. It is a solo episode, once again, because it's pretty much Christmas. Everyone's gone home. No one's in Marbella. Everyone's doing their own thing. It's kind of that time of year where people clock off, relax, and chill out a little bit. So it is just me and you for today. So let's get into it. We got some epic questions here. It's the morning time. I've got a nice big Shaker of electrolytes. I've already been caffeinated, so I'm ready to go. Okay, so first question, how to plan for the new year, goal setting, vision boards, habit building, big goals versus small goals. So my best piece of advice, and I've made this mistake so many times before, is setting too many small goals. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna set one massive goal and keep going until you achieve that. And so that could take you four, five, six months. It actually might take you the entire year, but that one goal that will change your life, change your entire year. All these other small goals, they're just kind of distractions. And oftentimes, once you achieve that main thing in your life, it could be starting that passion project, that passionate business that you know you should do, that's calling your name. It could be completely transforming your health and fitness. Probably, in my opinion, would sort out a lot of people's life if they just focus on their health and fitness. But anyways, everyone has this one big goal that they know if they do, it'll sort everything out. And for me, that one is actually YouTube. I need to get more consistent. I need to pick up the camera. I need to get better video ideas. I need to kind of, I will still use all the other apps like you know Twitter, uh, Instagram, of course, TikTok, everything. But I need, and YouTube Shorts, you know, all this vertical content. For me, I need to just concentrate on YouTube long form as I think that is what I'm best at. I think that's Probably like, I know I've got, you know, more of an audience on Instagram, but for me, it's the fact that I've built, you know, such an amazing YouTube channel that I need to keep going with it. I want to hit that 500K. So that's my goal. And doing that will sort everything out. You know, more fuel cakes will sell because there'll be more eyes on the business. And my coaching will go to the next level. It will scale because again, I'm doing more YouTube, providing more information. Uh, I'll be happier. <laughs> everything, you know, it'll all just sort itself out. So for me, that's my one big goal. I'm, I'm disregarding regarding everything else in 2024, because I know everything else will be sorted if I just go really hard on this YouTube channel. So my, my biggest goal setting advice is forget all these little goals, set one goal, and then 
whenever that's done, then move on, but do not move on until it's done. I've made that mistake. And I've also so set all these little goals. And first of all, you're a mile wide and an inch deep. You don't actually achieve any of them because you're so scattered and you've no focus. And focus is such a hard thing to come by in today's day and age. And you end up achieving nothing because you're trying to set all these goals. You're getting distracted and you're getting pulled all over the place. So set one big, massive goal. And Another thing is when you set all these small goals and you don't achieve them, you feel really bad about yourself. You're like, oh, I'm a screw up. I messed up. You know, I didn't achieve all these things. So set that one big massive goal. And with vision boards, this is powerful as well. So one thing that I've seen people do, I've done it myself, is set their screensaver as something that motivates them. Maybe a quote, an image, maybe your goal is to you know, buy a house or get an insane car or just anything. Just every time you see that and you pick up your phone, it is just a reminder to stay focused on that goal. I know people like they have these big massive vision boards that they have loads of things on them, but, and I think they're good, especially if there's somewhere that you will see often. It's very motivating when you have that vision board and then you see it come true. But I think, I hate to say it, but I think the phone is the most powerful as unfortunately, that's where most of our attention is nowadays. How to finally get in shape in 2024. So this is going to be kind of like a New Year's theme Q&A, New Year's kind of theme podcast. And so when everyone's starting out, and this goes for even if you've got quite an advanced physique and, you know, maybe you want to just get healthier or maybe you want to get leaner or maybe you want to get you want to get bigger and stronger. And again, you need to concentrate on one goal at a time <laughs> that actually it's so applicable to fitness because so many people, they're like, I want to build muscle and lose fat and they end up they're just spinning their wheels. So pick one goal at a time. And if you're more of a beginner who's getting into things for the first time, you really want to make that change. I would say create ultra, ultra small habits, like a list of things to do and make slow progress per week. Okay. So let's say this, what I, this is what I'd say. Let's say you want to get to 10 K steps per day. You want to vastly improve your diet. You want to start tracking calories. You want to get to the point where you're in the gym four to five times a week. You want to improve your strength in the gym. You want to sleep eight hours per night. You want to drink three to four liters of water per day. That's very overwhelming. So I said about five different topics there really start with one per week. So you might think, oh God, it's going to take me five or six weeks before I even start getting things moving. Trust me, you will burn yourself out. You will get sick of things. You will get overwhelmed. So week one, just focus on getting the steps in. And that's a habit. You got that locked down. Week two, focus on getting to the gym three, four, five times per week, lifting weights. Uh, week three, get your water intake in check. Something that people overlook so, so much. Like it's so simple. You know, it's just drinking water. I don't even track water, but it's something that so many people uh, overlook. I think actually that people are chronically dehydrated. I, I think that's like a little thing in today's day and age. And then so next, which is the hardest one in my opinion, and I'm going to go in on it a little bit more is get a good sleep routine in place. So there's so many different facets of fitness and try and do them all at once is going to end up in disaster. So uh, small habits that compound predictions for 2024 with social media trends. I think it is going to go back to a lot of unedited raw stuff, podcasts, long form style like this. I think people, they still want information. They want motivation. They want comedy. You always have to give the audience some sort of value. That's how it is. But I think people are going to be less impressed with the big edits and doing big kind of Mr. B style challenges and just kind of seeing a little bit of realness as well, because things come and go in trends. Like remember that like 2016 Casey nice that vlogging era, my favorite, to be honest, uh, I think that's going to make a big comeback and people will want to just see someone on a mission documenting their journey, be it in fitness, business, property, whatever niche of YouTube or social media that you're in. 
diet soda versus water for fat loss. So there's actually research showing that people who include zero calorie drinks that are delicious and taste the exact same as a normal thing are better and more consistent at losing weight. What an absolute shock. And the people that say, oh, it's unhealthy, oh, it's going to give you cancer. It is like the equivalent of drinking 40 cans of Coke Zero every single day, okay? It's just, actually, I think it's actually way more than that. Either way, it's just not gonna happen. It's not realistic. You can drink crazy amounts of water and die, okay? The, the dose, the poison is in the dose. So don't worry about that. I will be drinking on my zero calorie delicious beverages for uh, I think the, the 12th or 15th year in a row, pretty much my whole life. <clears throat> stop losing weight and I'm in a deficit. What do I do next? First of all, you're not in deficit if you stop losing weight. And there's a few things here. Um, starting with the most common, and that's adherence. You're simply just sick of being in a diet. And whether you realize it or not, you're eating more, you're grabbing some stuff from the fridge and it's not really registering. You're being uh, less consistent when tracking. That's another thing. Or you're just simply not tracking. Uh, there's just maybe... <laughs> Another one that happened to me once, I was like, I would buy this sauce that was for like, like, it was like a chili con carne sauce. And I was reading the calories and macros on it wrong. This is like many, many years ago. And I was adding it to all my meals. And I was like, why, why am I getting leaner? Why am I shutting up? I realized like it was like insanely high in calories. And like, I thought it was healthy. I thought it was fine. And until I had a closer look and I realized it was like, you know, when things are like per serving, only 100 calories, then it's like, oh, well, that's like a thousand in the fucking, in the thing. So there's probably some inaccurate tracking going on there. Made considerable progress. You've lost, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 kg, whatever it is. And your new maintenance and your new deficit has changed. So when you think about it, if you started at 100 kg and you're now 80 kg, well, you're, picture this, right? You're not carrying around a 20 kg dumbbell per day. So you've, you've like got a 20 kg dumbbell, you've stopped carrying it around. That's my best analogy for when people's maintenance changes. You're gonna burn a lot less calories. Imagine you got a weighted vest, you know, and it was 25 kg, you stopped carrying it around, you stopped walking up the stairs with that weighted vest, you stopped going on walks with that weighted kg vest. Well, that's basically what happens when you lose any amount of weight. So your maintenance calories change. That is the weighted vest, that is a great analogy, I need to use that more. So you need to recalculate your cutting diet. You need to either increase uh, cardio, fit, uh, your, you need to increase your physical output or decrease your calorie intake and calculate your new maintenance. And um, maybe also take a diet break as well. That can help a lot with adherence. But if you are not losing weight and you want to, you're not in deficit or something's going wrong with tracking. How to cope with Christmas weight gain. So you will hear a lot of personal trainers like me act all holier than thou saying oh it's no excuse you know it's only a few days of the of the year and you know you can go anyway okay i'm going to be training over christmas i just love going to the gym i'm going to relax on my diet a little bit i've got a few social events you can do either or okay you can cut all the way through christmas you can stay on top of your fitness regime probably that's going to be a better choice but if you choose to take a break you know maybe that's a better choice for you you know maybe that's going to help with long-term consistency and adherence but here's the main thing. What you do over the next two weeks is not important as what you do over the next 50 weeks. Okay, bigger picture. This two weeks of the year can't mess up the whole other 50 weeks. Like divide 50 by two. It's, it's a fractional time of the year, okay? So whether you decide to train your ass off through Christmas uh, or take it easy, take a complete rest or maybe a little bit of both, um, there's no wrong answer and just do whatever is best for you. But I just, I do urge people to not worry about it at this time of year. Um, you can know, all see in the gym in January. Don't worry about it this time of the year. Um, but you should worry about your health and fitness for the majority of the year. So that is that is my official Rob Lips at Christmas advice. Um, you know, don't worry about it. Also, <laughs> weight gain is is not permanent. You know, just so you can, if you gain it, you can lose it back. Do you track water and fiber intake? Mm. <sighs> Those ghost electrolytes just remake drinking water so easy. Code Lipset for 20% off. 
So, um, no, I do not track water or fiber intake. I just make sure they're getting nailed by just consistently drinking liquids throughout the day. And this, how much is in this? It's like, it's like pretty much nearly a liter. It is 710 milliliters. So I'll drink like, you know, three of these a day, a few glasses of water. Probably have uh, one of these when I'm training as well. Just make sure I'm hydrated, okay? And the color of your urine, something to go off as well. Uh, with fiber intake, uh, fiber is amazing, okay? Just for our overall health and for our satiety, for hunger. If you're hitting your five a day, generally fiber tends to sort itself out. So it's not something I track. I kind of recommend people, they track the bare minimum. Like the main thing is obviously tracking calories and macros if you want results. It's just the way to go. Uh, other things I'd say is tracking your weights in the gym, extremely important. So there's two. And the only other thing that I, I do loosely track or I just do my best is sleep. So I haven't got like a sleep tracker. Uh, I really want to get one of those eight sleep matches that you, know, that you can heat them up and cool them down. Really want to get one of them. But uh, I do not track sleep for the moment. Uh, they're the only two things I really track is my uh, nutrition and my training and my step count as well. My phone does that automatically. I think if you try track like your micronutrients, it's impossible, uh, try track your water intake, your fiber intake, your sleep intake, your steps, your cardio, it just becomes a little bit overwhelming and unnecessary. And if you're just doing the right things anyways, they'll just sort themselves out. Current role models I look up to. So... I try not to use the word role models. It can be just a little bit of a strange word. Uh, there's definitely people, you know, I don't think we should idolize certain people, but I think we should definitely uh, take inspiration from people. You know, don't put anyone on a pedestal but yourself, really. You know, you want to be the main character. But there's plenty of people that I choose inspiration from and that I consume their content, I really enjoy. And, you know, if I met them in person, I'd be like, oh, holy shit, you know, you know I follow this guy online. Uh, so at the moment, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, of course, Andrew Huberman, Lex Friedman, and Chris Williamson, really good. And then my friends, you know, Mike Thurston, amazing podcast, Christian, Max, I love Max's podcast, one of the best. And then I'll kind of just see what guests they have on, and then I will, you know, kind of monkey branch from there. So I think if you have like your five main YouTubers, five main podcasters, and then just see what guests they have on, it's a a good way to find uh, find some respectable individuals. New projects for 2024. I am projected out of it. Okay, no more. We got you know the game plan app. We have uh, my one-on-one -on -one VIP coaching. We have that is which January is going to be the main focus there. We have fuel cakes. We have the villa. We have YouTube. You know, we have the brands that I work with. Alfley Ghost. I'm actually taking on. Two new sponsors for the coming year that, you know, have nothing to do. There's no clash of interest with them. There's a lot going on, you know, so there's only so much I can post about. There's only so much I can do and talk about. So I'm like, I think less projects for 2024. I think I've got, I've got more than enough right there. So like I said at the start, if I just focus on YouTube, all those projects will sort themselves out. Two projects, actually. I'm not sure if these, you know... These are strictly mine. What is a wedding? Um, me and Linda are planning our wedding. So we're trying to kind of confirm that. It's looking like September in Marbella. We're just chatting to a few different venues, getting quotes. It's looking expensive. And then also, this kind of ties in with that. We want to use Villa Lipset. Um, as like a day two venue for the wedding is that will could cost a lot and it's a little bit more meaningful, you know, having everyone here. Um, and so what we need to do, this is a question as well, what's next for the lips? It, what we need to do is we need to do the outdoor. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't done like the full room to <laughs> the full house tour yet is the inside is done. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. As you can see, it looks like a studio museum. I'm so happy with it. But the outdoor, there's a few issues like that grass has completely died out in the left so I'm gonna have to tile over that and turn it into a seating area or even a workout area should have done that from the beginning uh, the upstairs needs a pergola and then we need to get rid of the old tiles like we still have the old tiles they have like paw prints in them from the previous owner so we still need to do a lot to the outdoors and I've gotten a few quotes for that and it's ranging anywhere from 30,000 to 20,000 
which I'm just like, oh God, you know, more house stuff. It really is never ending as much as I, I do love it. Um, so they're like some kind of the main big projects I'll, I'll be focusing on for next year on top of the usual things that I have going on. Do you think you will always live in Marbella? No, I think ideally. So I'm actually going to Dubai in January to set up a few things there. Uh, I think I am actually getting my residency, by the way, I'm going about it. I need to double check that because it's like a citizenship residency. Uh, so I'm going to set up in Dubai for a while. That's somewhere th where there's just a lot of business, a lot of networking, a lot of people in the fitness industry there. So I'm going there in January for quite some time. Going back to Ireland next week, of course. The plan is, look, I'll always probably base myself here, but realistically, I really, really do want to get a HQ, a base in Ireland, but it is just, I think it's the hardest property market in the world. And I've looked at like America, UK, Spain was pretty straightforward, you know, getting a place here was surprisingly easy. Of course, the Spanish are so relaxed and chilled, but uh, Ireland is so, you have to jump through so many loops to get a place. So that's super difficult, but that is a long-term goal of mine. But I think like, it's honestly like three, four or five years down the road. Depends how well YouTube goes. Um, but I think I, I will, I will, I think I will always live in Marbella, between Marbella and Dublin. That's the plan. I do also, I just love it here. Like today's December, it's pure blue skies. And I just uh, generally love the lifestyle here more and more every year. So yeah, between Dublin and Marbella. Three tips for someone moving abroad. So the biggest tip I can say, right? I've moved, I've lived in America for three months before YouTube uh, when I was on like a college exchange. And I've obviously, I'm, and I've spent like three months at a time in America before as well. I've spent, you know, a year in London. I, I've obviously spent a lot of time in Marbella now as well. And I've lived in Dublin. So I've lived in like four different places technically, and I've traveled a lot as well. I've been so fortunate to travel a lot to many different places and not just place for like a week, you know, I went to Tulum for a month, okay? And my biggest piece of advice is if you want to move somewhere, okay, go get an Airbnb there for a month. People are like talking about, like some people ask me, they're like, hey, I'm going to get a year lease in Marbella. And I'm like, dude, you could hate it. You could like only like the summer and or only like the winter. You could only like a certain time of year, you know, just go there for a month, you know, rent a car, drive around, get familiar uh, with the the culture, the, the locals, the day-to-day -day life, just do one month, okay, one month and see if, hey, could I see, even two months, and say, hey, could I see myself living here for six or 12 months? So that is tip number one, is just get an Airbnb for a month. It doesn't, have, if you don't like it, just leave. It's fine. Um, so that's my biggest tip. Number two is say, you know, what am I going to do day to day basis here? You know, uh, what am I going to do for work? How am I going to make money here? If you make money online, it's probably not a big issue. And three, just kind of do a lot of Googling, walk around on Google maps, you know, see what area you'll go to, what's around you, what gyms, what shops, uh, what amenities are in your area. Uh, so I think if you do those three things, uh, number one being the main one, you'll be uh, pretty well prepared. I want to visit Marbella. This is like the Marbella part of the podcast. I want to visit Marbella. What is the best area for gyms and healthy food? So in my opinion, it is Nueva Andalusia. It's where Villa Lips it is. And that is the place just above uh, Porto Benus. So Porto Benus, you, it's like kind of like nightclubs and bars and restaurants. And it's where all the yachts are. So it's like very touristy. Uh, I don't actually like it too much. Like if I was to go for dinner, I'd probably go down towards Puente Romano area. But it's still a central location. You know, property is ultra expensive on the port for a reason. But if I was to choose an area and recommend it to stay in, I would say it's called Nueva Andalusia, and it's just above Port Mouse. So you're still in the action. There's, it's where all the gyms are, like Paddle Club, uh, M13, uh, Elements is in San Pedro, but it's, it's very close to Nueva Andalusia. Uh, and there's like loads of healthy cafes, Breathe, Roses. Um, there's, just, there's just so many. There's an infinite amount. And it's also in the suburbs, so, you know, there's not much trouble around here. There's a few nightclubs here as well, if you want to partake. But Nueva Andalusia, in my opinion, uh, has it all. You also um, don't really need a car. Like, I didn't have a car for the first 
a month or so until I got it shipped over and you can walk everywhere. I can walk down Portmouth if I want. So Nueva Andalusia is my favorite area in my very biased opinion. Thoughts on the current situation in Ireland. So this is a super tough one to me, for me to answer because I try to stay unpolitical and, you know, I'm not that interested in the news. I'm not glued to the news. And if there's something going on in the world, it, I, I try not to let me, if unnecessarily affect my life. You know, so many people, they get, they get caught up and stressed over what's going on, you know, in other parts of the world that have nothing to do with them. And, you know, they let that dictate their life. And it's like, that's not how you're going to improve yourself and your community by worrying about just something has nothing to do with you, okay? Uh, but Ireland does have something to do with me. I'm from there. I'm very patriotic. I love Ireland and I love Irish people. And there's basically just a lot of riots going on with immigration and housing. And just right now, it does not look like a nice place to be. Uh, Conor McGregor has been very vocal about a lot of it. So you can go check out some of his tweets. I think they actually could be gone now. But I just hate to see the whole nation fighting against each other and just in a kind of state of unrest. It actually really makes me sad. And when I go back here, and I think I'm going back like two days, three days, I really hope that, you know, there's a, it's, it's mainly just the news is portraying it badly and that walking around town is still a nice experience as I remember it. Comment down below if you've been in town in Dublin recently. But I think with the immigration, you know, as long as I, I'm an immigrant in Spain, as if I can complain about that, but <laughs> I think I'm a resident actually, because if you buy a property over half a million, you, you get automatic residency. And there's also digital nomad visa if people want to look at that, but to go in on that, if you're going to go to another country, you need to be a contributing member of society and you just need to be vetted. And that's as simple as that. You just don't want letting uh, dodgy characters and criminals into your country. And I don't think that's a controversial statement. And then I think if you are vetted properly, then it's good to go and you're going to contribute to society, you're going to assimilate, then absolutely. And I also, people say close open borders in Ireland. Personally, um, being in the EU, I've found it great being able to move freely around to different countries, have the same currency. So that's my take on it. And I think it's pretty simple and most people will agree on that. If you don't agree, comment down below. I'd love, I'd actually love to hear your opinion. Best breakup advice. So number one breakup advice is be selfish. Be selfish for a couple of months. Get your money up, get your physique up, get your health up. That's going to get your confidence up tremendously and find a project to take you off your mind, off your ex, if you're male, female, whatever, just find something to stop you sitting around constantly thinking off your previous relationship. And it's funny when we go through a breakup, we, it's called selective memory. We have a, a way of thinking of all the positive parts of the relationship and you don't remember all the fights, the arguments and the stress. You only think of the good things. And so you're like, you know, you're, you're just thinking, oh my God, should I get back with them? And in most cases you shouldn't. So find something to preoccupy your mind. Finally pursue that passion project that you've just didn't have the time to is, you know, maybe you're hanging out with Stacy and you just never got around to it. Well, now it's the time to be selfish and work on yourself, become superhero, like literally become the person that you always wanted to be, level up in every aspect. Then look, I'm gonna say something a little bit evil here. Once you do that, your ex is gonna start noticing. She's gonna be looking. She's gonna be like, oh shit, I made a mistake. Maybe you got broken up with her or not, I don't know. She's gonna be like, oh God. And uh, yeah, you'll come out the winner there. So my advice is be selfish. Uh, don't actually go out like chasing chicks, chasing tail, uh, going on loads of nights out. One, when you're hungover, you'll just feel ultra depressed with a breakup on top of that. Um, that's not gonna be uh, helpful with your health and fitness and finance goals. And it'll just be kind of empty and you're just kind of going out and chasing girls for the sake of it. And it'll also come across kind of desperate and needy. So I would say go in, stay in for a while, focus on yourself relax, um, hit the gym, you know, get your money up and just really be selfish for at least six months. And you'll look back over those six months and be like, whoa, I leveled up. And that's the ultimate goal. So best break of advice is that. And you don't, don't go, don't go on the pace. Don't go on the rebound. You know, let's say if you're a guy watching this, which you probably are, 
if you if you want to let the girl go out and you know sleep around, then to just do it, okay, but don't be tempted to do the same. It honestly it'll just make you feel worse. Did you know that bilinguals outperform monolinguals in tasks requiring working memory? That means Babbel isn't just a language learning app, it's a tool for sharpening your brain's ability to hold and process information. This fall, start speaking a new language in just three weeks with Babbel. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games on your phone, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. As some of you may know, I bought and renovated a property here in Marbella this year, and safe to say, Babbel was hugely helpful from talking to the city council to communicating with the building team. Even if you're just going on holiday, it makes it so easy to pick up on how to order food, ask for directions, and speak to locals. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash game plan. Get 55% off at babbel.com game plan, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash game plan. Rules and restrictions may apply. What are your thoughts on the Manosphere slash red pill community? I think it gets like 90% of things right. I think when you go a little bit too far, it starts to just kind of hate on women and it becomes kind of incel behavior. And then it goes into MGTOW, which is men going their own way, which basically means like guys who've just given up on women. They think women are evil. But I think the red pill and the manosphere, I think it focuses on just, you know, becoming, leaning into your masculinity, uh, becoming the man that you're meant to be, and also just seeing modern relationships for what they are. I think it's it's pretty cool. It's taught me a lot about relationships and dating. And uh, it's taught me on kind of what to focus on um, to becoming a man. But I think it gets most things right. It's mainly just kind of, you know, telling yourself to boss up, work hard, train hard, you know, get your physique up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. But I think if you go lean too, too far into it, you can go a little bit crazy and a little bit into MGTOW area, which is, is you know, it's a dangerous area. Like women aren't evil. Okay? Women are like the most beautiful things in the world. You know, they complement and make men's life. <laughs> One thing that's like the reason men do anything is like for women. You know, why did I buy a fast car if it's like just a bunch of dudes watching? Most guys wouldn't. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting. And, you know, it's a it's a massive kind of niche that I dip into from now and then. Views on being single versus dating in your 20s. So I was in a relationship, I think, from I was about 16, 17, up until I was around 24. And then from about 24 to 27, I was single. And then 27 now to 31, in a relationship again. So I can kind of compare the two. And when I was in my early 20s, uh, being in a relationship actually kept me really focused and it helped me build a great career in the fitness industry. I think if I was always going on dates, uh, always kind of texting girls, DMing takes up so much time, uh, always going on nights out drinking and didn't have someone to kind of just stay in with and chill and work. Um, I think that would have detracted from my mission and it would have kind of made me work less. Some people say that, you know, oh, when you're single, it's easier to focus more. And it all just depends on the type of partner you have. Like a lot of guys will find it very difficult to stay in if they're single and maybe it's a little bit too lonely. So then I did have that period, right? So I achieved, you know, some decent success. You know, I had a nice freedom in my life <clears throat> by the age of, you know, like I said, uh, 24, whatever it was. And then, yeah, those three years, I definitely wasn't as productive. You know, I was going out traveling more, I was partying a lot more. And you didn't have someone, I didn't have someone to kind of, you know, keep me grounded. 
And then, you know, I met Linda, of course, when I was about 27. And then for those two years, when we were just getting to know each other, you know, we were still traveling around having fun. But then the last three years, you know, as we've both grown up, we've realized like what we, you know, we've gotten so comfortable with each other. We realize what we like. And she's just so supportive of my goals. And having a woman in your life to wake up next to, and she just tells you that you're the best and you can do anything and she'll always support me. That's like invaluable. Like that's the biggest entrepreneur hack. That's the biggest productivity hack. It's the biggest motivation hack is, is having that someone to just tell you that and just back you up no matter what. So I think it depends on the type of uh, woman you have in your life. Um, I think, you know, you should try a little bit of both out. You know, you shouldn't be in a relationship your whole life, shouldn't be single your whole life. But ultimately, it comes down to what type of person you get in a relationship with. And the number one thing, number one green flag is you got to find someone who supports your mission. That's it. Find that locker down, boys. How to become better on camera. So first of all, I think speaking to camera, if that's not a skill that you have already, it's not just about being a YouTuber, it's not about like Zoom meetings, you know, business meetings, anything, presentation, being more articulate. I've definitely found that it transfers into real life. I've definitely found it massively improves confidence. There's just so much benefits to being able to speak to camera. In 2024, please put that on your to-do list of things to learn. The only way that I've gotten better at is just putting in the reps. I've been doing this for 10 years and practice, practice, practice is the only thing. I have found, maybe there's a course out there that this is a speaking camera course. I haven't found it. Perhaps there is, but from my experience, just you gotta just put in the reps, put in the volume and don't get it twisted. To this day, I still mess up the whole time. You know, just same, even in like a day-to-day -day conversation off camera, I'll like mess up my words because I speak quite fast. And so don't, don't let that discourage you that, you know, you will still 10 years on, you'll still mess up the camera, but th don't make that put you off from doing it. But the only uh, tip I have is just do it more and more and more. And it also helps if you've got something prepared. So I don't read off a script, but I'll have these questions written out on the flow to the conversation. And when I'm doing a podcast, even, you know, I will have just in front of me, I'll have key points that I want to hit. So you don't have to script your videos and read from a teleprompter, but it just does help to have some structure to when you're about to go speak on camera. Do I eat much junk food? Not really. I think my taste buds have kind of evolved. I think when I was young, you know, when you're in college, you're a teen, you love McDonald's and Burger King, Subway, all that. But mainly if I'm going to quote unquote cheat on my diet, hate that word, doesn't really, doesn't really make sense. But if I'm going to go off plan or whatever you want to call it, I just go for something kind of nice and high quality. Like, you know, last weekend we were in Nobu, which is like just so nice, really quality ingredients, you know, the best ingredients. And it's just sushi. It's like fish and rice. And I think that's like the most delicious thing ever. Or if I'm going for a nice steak with some roast vegetables, maybe very high calorie due to the cut of steak, but it's still quite a healthy meal. It's still very nutrient dense. So I haven't had like my favorite, if I was to choose my favorite fast food, it would probably be like a Domino's. <laughs> like I haven't had a Domino's in so many years. Um, maybe I'll get a Domino's after this, but no, just my, my taste. If I'm going for something that you know, I'm going out to eat, I like to go to like a, a high quality restaurant instead, but no, I'm kind of grown out of junk food and it definitely is like some people are a little bit addicted to it. They're addicted to the convenience. They're addicted to like that certain taste off something. And you know, it's, it's definitely something that you should try and improve your taste for more, more quality foods if you can. But yeah, no, don't eat much junk food or fast food, so to speak. Hardest period of your life. So when I started YouTube, I was 22 at the time. And just that year before that, when I was failing college, I had no job. I was getting fired from like, you know, little retail jobs here and there. I had no direction. I didn't know what my next move was going to be. I was feeling so lost. That was a tough one. But at the same time, because I was so young, I was like, oh, I got time. If I try something and I fail, it doesn't matter because I can just try again. I've got so much time. And um, thankfully something did work, but that was definitely a tough period of my life. But more recently was 2022. So it was the year that I was like building this house, I was finishing it. And so financially it was very difficult. The renovation came to like 150,000 in total at the cost of the house. I'll never say the exact price, but 
It was over half a million. So it was very financially straining. And then I didn't have a base. So I was like paying all this money and I couldn't work to my best. You know, I was moving around, living out of a suitcase, going home for a few months at a time. Then I'd come back and, oh, the villa isn't ready. I've got to rent an Airbnb for a month until it's ready. Oh, it's peak summer. What's that? Rent is five grand. Oh, great. Another five grand that I could have put towards the house. Super stressful year, super disorganized year. But you get through everything, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel always. And then now, 2023, this year, I've had the best year ever. You're truly the best year of my life. I can confidently say that. So if you're going through a shitty year, maybe a few of you guys have had a shitty year this year. Oftentimes, when you go through some shit, you, there's good things coming your way. You've got through the worst of it. And a quote that I kept saying to myself last year or the year before 2022, whatever, was you've got a 100% success rate of getting through everything life has thrown at you. You'll always get through it. You always have. So that's one thing that I, I always said to myself. So yeah, the start was a tough and then, you know, 2022, difficult as well. Actually, even like, the, yeah, this time last year, I was, I was not in a good place. What do the next 10 years look like for you? So I love when people are like, oh, you're going to do this forever. Guys, I'm 31, right? P personally, I think I'm looking the best I have. You know, physique is definitely the best. Um, mentally, financially, now I'm in the best. I got some assets. Percy, I think like my, I feel like my life is only beginning. I really do. And you know, men especially don't have a clue what they're doing until they're 30. Like we don't, our brains don't, don't start working. They don't start maturing until we're 30. So I'm 31 now and I feel, I feel like I'm one year old. You know, I feel like my life just began at 30 and now it's time to really make an impact on the world. So I'm going to be doing what I'm still doing, you know, doing this. Uh, everything is going to be revolving around fitness and social media and all that good stuff, helping people improve their life, making a positive impact. And I feel I'm really only getting started. Like 21, 20 to 30 was like the intro. And now this 30 onwards is part one. Do you invest What's your advice on investing? So first of all, not financial advice. There is probably some amazing financial YouTubers that you can go watch. Uh, but for me, I do invest, okay? So I guess property now, which is gone up a lot in value. So I'm a property investor, I guess. And it is also very expensive to rent this place in the summer. Not saying I've rented it yet. Maybe I have. Got to got to keep the tax man guessing. But um yeah, so property I've made an investment in now, but before that I invested in crypto, Bitcoin, which again, I've seen great returns on it. If you like, if you zoom out, like, yeah, it goes, it's very volatile, but if you zoom out, it's never gone down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I, always, always, I have cashed out as well, but I always leave a little bit in. So that and the S&P 500, which again, it doesn't go down. Just zoom, zoom out, go, go five years out. It doesn't go down. So <laughs> that's it. I don't do any trading. I just do dollar cost average. So it just comes out of my account, you know, and there's um also there's a few apps that it can round up. So let's say you spend like eight euro in a shop, it'll put two euro into Bitcoin or two euro into the S&P 500. Just plenty of apps that do that. Uh, so that's what I do. You know, nothing aggressive and uh, nothing genius. Just property, Bitcoin, um, S&P 500. And number one thing that I've invested very heavily in is myself. So they're the best investment you will ever make is into your own business and into yourself. So that could be self-education, I think laptops, cameras, videographers, hiring editors, anything that will help your business is just, it's an immediate return. It's an immediate return, okay? So that I've invested heavily in. I'd say that is what I spend my most money on um, myself and my business, you know, be it editors, videographers, laptops, camera equipment, podcast equipment, all that. If you want to make more money, it's just an information thing. You can literally pay someone or, or buy something, be it a book or a course, that will just tell you what exactly to do. Like it's literally like following an instruction manual and you're just like, oh, I literally do this. Like if you wanna make more money, it's an information thing. It's as simple as that. It's crazy. And once you get in this mindset, it's like an abundance mindset with money that you, you realize it's 
it's a game. It's just like a video game. There's so much money out there. Then it just becomes a lot more easier and it just feels like a video game. Dealing with imposter syndrome. I think one of the key traits of any successful person is having imposter syndrome. I feel every single morning that there's going to be a knock on that door of someone just going to be like, hey, Rob, the jig is up. Come on, it's time to pack up your stuff. Let's go. Come on, you're, you're, going, you're going back to Ireland. You're going back to the box room. Get in there. And that keeps me on my toes. And that like motivates me to not, I don't want to go back to my old life. You know, I don't want to do that. And, but I feel I'm like, I should. So I have intense imposter syndrome every day. And I'm not sure if I want to get rid of it because if, if I do get rid of it, then I'll just get too comfortable. So I think imposter syndrome is normal, especially if you're constantly leveling up in, in life, you'll feel like, oh God, you know, I'm the old me, I don't deserve this, but you do. But I think it's just completely normal thing that uh, a lot of people who are progressing in their life will have. How to stop overthinking. This is something that I haven't gotten the hang of and it's something I do want to get rid of and that is overthinking. And something I overthink a lot about is like my content as well. I'm just like, oh, what will that person think of this? You know, oh God, is this going to be good enough? You just have to just stop caring and just do it. And I know that's so simple advice. I'm like, I wish I had a hack for you, but I don't. One little hack is you're thinking that everyone will care about a certain thing. They're not even thinking about you. So once you realize that, then that'll cause you to stop overthinking less and just do your own thing. But it's something that I suffer from for sure. Um, and that's something I want to change in the new year and folks, I'm becoming better at just not caring. Have I ever felt hopeless? How do I deal with it? For sure. I go through phases of feeling kind of like, you know, the imposter syndrome thing, but just this is a bit more intense. I go through phases of feeling like, oh, I'm done for, oh, this is the end. I'm screwed. And again, it just takes a little bit of time to get over it. And I just say to myself, you know, you've gone through every single thing that you've ever been put against. And I've got a tattoo on my leg and it says, you'll either find a way or make one. And I'm not a big tattoo person. It's like tiny. Most people couldn't even notice it. If you're looking at me, it's on my ankle. And I honestly, like, I always go back to that quote. And when I'm feeling hopeless, you kind of like, I, I picture my life as a movie and I'm like, oh, this is the part where the character is like, it's looking like he's, he's going to lose, you know, hope is all gone. Oh God, he's it's, it's screwed. And then they make like an epic comeback or they figure it out and they overcome whatever uh, hurdle they're going through. So you kind of make a movie out of it. And that's, that's what I do. I just snap out of it and get back to it. But of course I feel hopeless. You know, I feel depressed at times. I feel anxiety at times. I'm a very positive guy, but of course we all have these feelings and, and they're all normal. How do I build a fitness routine that lasts? You need to find whatever form of training that you just don't mind doing. This might, might change over time. Like I know there's people that start off in bodybuilding and then they go into CrossFit and that's fine. Just whatever it is that you're into at the moment, just something that you won't mind turning up to. And if you can like even rotate these things, a lot of people are going hybrid. Well, then that's okay. But for me, I've tried, you know, lower rep strength training. I've tried the CrossFit stuff. I've actually been doing a little bit of high rocks recently. It's fun, but I just do it once every like week or two. And for me, it has always just been hypertrophy, pump work, you know, bodybuilding style training. I don't know why I like never, I, I don't know why I always stuck with it and never gave it up. I honestly think like when you're pushing yourself in the gym, there's that sick lighting, you're getting that last rep out and you stand up and like, you see, you kind of see results straight away. Like you see that pump in the mirror, you know, it things, whatever you're training, it's always something kind of new, uh, especially when you're cutting down, you see those new shreds. It's just like, it's kind of like instant gratification. You see it straight away. Uh, I just always love it. And for me, I know I'll always just kind of stick with that. Um, maybe I want to improve like my fitness, you know, start getting into running a little bit more. I think that actually compliments lifting don't kill me but as long as you find that thing that you just don't mind doing it doesn't matter if it's like fucking zumba or whatever just if it gets you up off the couch consistently then i'm all for it i'm not going to hate on any exercise what are your thoughts on the carnivore diet craze so that has been definitely especially if you're on twitter for some reason 
that has been like the most um, trendy diet I've seen this year. Like I've seen the most people convert to it or the most people talk about it. And I actually really like it. I think animal-based products are one of the most nutrient-dense, healthy things we can eat. I just think as with any extreme diet, you just go a little bit too far. You know, with veganism, vegetables are amazing. You know, plant-based, great, right? But then you just start eating, oh, you stop eating, but then you stop eating honey because it comes from a bee and you're just like, are you insane? It's fucking honey for God's sakes. So it oftentimes when you get these something, it's like these something diet, it takes a good thing and ruins it. Okay. So then carnivore, like they're afraid to eat vegetables for some reason. They say your body doesn't digest them, doesn't absorb them. It's just complete waffle. And the answer always lies in the middle. But I think out of all the crazy diets, Carnivore, I, I do see the appeal to. It's simple to follow. It's easy. It's high proteins, high satiety. It's delicious, to be fair. And look, if you want to call it carnivore, if you want to call it caveman, if you want to call it the Stone Age diet, whatever you want, sounds cool, whatever. Um, if that gets the job done for you, I'm all for it. But um, you're just, in most cases, cutting out a lot of things completely unnecessarily. And you can get all the results that you're feeling or getting or plan on getting from carnivore diet from just a normal healthy diet eat your vegetables eat a nutrient dense diet i'm actually gonna i'm gonna start something i'm gonna call the nutrient dense diet i think that, i think that's pretty sensible but yeah out of all the crazes i think like i eat a lot of meat myself and the carnivore diet you know uh, <laughs> i like it but yeah it's just it's just a little bit a little bit too it's pro sciencey how do you age so well? So I have been, some people on, <laughs> how do you age so well? Thank you. A lot of people on the internet would say the opposite. Personally, I think facially, I've aged fine. You know, I've been on YouTube or social media so many years, like near a decade. So of course, you're going to look different as like I started off as like a boy, pretty much like when I see pictures and videos of me when I started. Um, and now I'm obviously a man. So obviously there's going to be some changes, but I think I've generally kept my skin quite good. Um, and what I notice whenever I do kind of look older, it's when I gain weight on the face or when I look puffy or inflamed or whatever it is. And so my, the, if I was just to give an honest answer, my biggest tip would just be to stay lean. And that is what is going to make you look old. If you gain all this fat and water in your face, your face is going to look droopy. Like it's, it's not going to look tight. Okay. People go get a facelift. Okay. All you need to do is go on a diet. So if you're lean, you're going to have that sharp jaw. Your eyes are even going to be more clear, even around your nose, everything, um, your neck, you're just going to look a lot sharper and therefore younger. So I really think uh, with aging, it really comes down to weight loss. And that's also by default, you're going to have a healthy diet there as well. Uh, drink plenty of water and sleep. And they're the main things. I'm not even big on skincare at all. I have like a little moisturizer I use. That's it. I shave. That's it. And also like one thing as well, when I'm shaving, I do think that kind of like, I'm, I've always been clean shaven. I've never had a beard. I, I would like... This isn't proven, but I think by shaving so much, it like keeps my face clean, but I'm not too sure about that. If you've got a beard, how do you keep your face clean? Tell me. So that's the main thing is honestly staying lean. And that's why I'm not a big fan of these, you know, massive bulking cycles. I, I did that, you know, when I first, when I was a teenager, I was first getting into lifting and more for that. But I think as you get a little bit older and uh, more advanced in training, they become more pointless and uh, there's less return on them. And I think it can kind of, you know, mess up your facial aesthetics as well as your physical aesthetics. How do you think, last question, how do you think social media affects our mental health, especially younger people? So I was looking at this crazy graph, uh, Scott Galloway posted it, and it was like the satisfaction with life for younger people. And I think it was in 2008 or 2009, it just drops off a cliff. And a lot of people were commenting, you know, there's no clear answer to why I did this, but a lot of people were commenting, this was when the popularity of social media and mobile phones came into play. And I think that makes perfect sense. Drop a comment, what do you think? But I think it has definitely made us compare each other to ourselves more than it ever has. And this is why it is so important to always go back to my quote, 
Don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10 in a world where comparison is just everywhere nowadays. It's when every time we pick up a phone, we see someone with a new thing, we see someone hitting a new milestone, and it just can distract from your mission so much and it can make you feel bad. So look at people for inspiration, but don't get too hung up on it. Don't dwell on it. And I think that's a, a nice way to finish the pod. But to answer the question, just to go over it again, I don't think social media affects especially young people's mental health, especially young girls. I think it affects it really badly and that you need to really be careful and curate your social media. So guys, I will see you in 2024. I'll probably do some Dublin videos before that, but if not, I will see you then. And let's have the best year ever. Let's literally have make 2024 a year where you look back on it and you're like, oh my God, I'm just so glad that I set those goals and I made those decisions. I'm pumped for it. I have a good, good feeling about it. Like, you know, when I went back to my bad year there, I didn't have a good feeling about that year because I was like, oh, I don't, don't have a house. This year, I'm feeling a really good year. So let's get after it. I love you guys. Keep it real. Peace out. Catch you in the next one. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry and literally billions of dollars are being invested, so buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power, so how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you do want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash game plan. That's oracle.com slash game plan. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed.